Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars and you're watching another Luthier's Quick Tips. In this episode, what I wanted to do was circle back to a topic which I covered in a previous video. It was the one where I reviewed the LMI Digital String Action Gauge. In that video, I had asked you, the viewer, to submit in the comment section of that video the numbers that you shoot for when setting the action on your guitars. And specifically, I was looking at um, how you set the action for the high E and the low E strings over the first fret, as well as the 12th or you know the 15th or 17th fret, whichever one you like to, to take the measurements at. And I did this for a couple of reasons. First of all, I've always noticed that there is um, sort of a controversy around what folks consider to be high, medium, and low action. And when someone says they want low action, the, the problem is, is there really isn't a specific number that we can target to achieve that action because one person's idea of low action may not be the same as somebody else's. And that's always kind of intrigued me because when I'm building a guitar for a client, I always will ask them, you know, what kind of action do you want? And of course, I'm always hoping to get a number, but that almost never happens. Instead, I usually get, you know, I want low action or medium action or, you know, I want it low, but not so low that it buzzes or, you know, that kind of thing. I never really get a target number, which is understandable. So I wanted to get an idea from you all what you consider the, the proper action for the guitars that you build or, or repair. Now, about 20 years ago, I purchased a book um, called How to Make Electric Guitar Play Great. Uh, this is from uh, Dan Erlewine, and I bought this this book, you know, as a way to kind of help when I was first starting out to understand what it is customers will expect when their guitars are set up and prepared for them. And what I liked about the book was in the back, they have pages and pages of setup details, you know, things like uh, the scale length, the radius, the type of frets, relief, the nut action, the action at the 12th fret, pull piece height, all kinds of uh, little details like that that I found to be really useful. And so that's kind of what I had based a lot of my approach to setting up guitars on. And it's really different, I think, when you're building guitars for a market where you may not actually get to meet the person buying the guitar, you know, just like somebody who would buy it off of Reverb or, you know, maybe eBay or something like that. Uh, what I have to do is set up the guitar for action that is going to be sort of a middle ground, uh, low enough to be playable and desirable, but not so low as to cause string buzz and that sort of thing. Because one of the things I have to be careful of is the fact that after I finish building a guitar here in arid Colorado and then ship it off to another part of the United States where the humidity levels might be significantly higher, there's always that possibility that there's going to be some movement in the neck, which is going to affect the action and can cause string buzz and, and that sort of thing. And I always tell my customers, you know, I've done the, you know, everything I can to make sure the guitar is going to play correctly before I ship it. But once you receive it, you should probably let the guitar acclimate for a couple of weeks. You can continue playing it, of course, but just be aware that there may be some issues that are going to need to be addressed. But after about two weeks, that's when you can really gauge the performance of the guitar, its string action, and decide whether or not there needs to be some adjustments. And if you're, you know, if the, the, the customer is confident that they can make those adjustments themselves, they can do it. Or I, as I always encourage, they can take it to a local luthier who can do whatever needs to be done to eliminate string buzz and to make the guitar playable and to set the action to what they prefer. Now, when I was looking at the comments that you all left, I was really struck by the fact that 
everybody seems to be in the same neighborhood when it comes to setting the string action. And the numbers that kept coming up over and over, and, and you know, I'm not going to uh, recite those numbers and, and who left them or anything like that. If you want to, uh, you know, I'll post a link for that um, video so you can go back and watch it or you can read the comments and, and see specifically what people were uh, mentioning in terms of action. The numbers that kept coming up uh, were uh, at the, on the bass side, of the strings at the 12th fret was an action of about 4 64ths of an inch, which is roughly 0 0.065 inches. And that would mean about, oh, 1.3 millimeters. And on the treble side, everyone seemed to, or at least the number that kept coming up was 3 64ths of an inch, which according to my little uh, decimal to fraction calculator is 0 .4, 0 0.0469 inches and 1.19 millimeters. That's, that seems to be the number that was coming up the most. And that's really pretty close to what I set up a guitar for. I typically at the 12th fret will set my bass side strings to about 5 64ths of an inch and then between 3 and 4 64ths of an inch on the treble side. So everyone seemed to have that that same target when it came to action at the 12th fret. Now there were a couple of guys and you'll see that in the comments who were posting numbers that were significantly lower. I think there was one guy who was saying he likes uh, 0.03 inches to 0 0.039 and that is literally a 30 second of an inch over the 12th fret. I really don't see how you can play a guitar like that without some string buzz, you know, and if you're going to have to induce uh, an extended amount of or an increased amount of relief in order to avoid string buzz, I, you're going to be raising it higher than a 32nd of an inch. Anyways, I don't know that many people who can play with the action that low. Now, for the uh, action at the first fret, it seemed like there was a division. Some of you are measuring the height, you know, like I would with my little string gauge, uh, digital string gauge. But um, some of you were also using another technique that I like to use as well, which is where you press the fret down. Uh, or the string down to the second or third fret and then look to see how much daylight there is between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string and typically you want that to be so low that it would literally be you know two hundred thousandths of an inch <laughs> so um, for those who actually measure it it seemed like we're talking um, twenty thousandths of an inch on the bass side and then about 15 thousandths of an inch on the treble side. And that works out to be somewhere around, uh, it's roughly a 64th of an inch on the treble side and then maybe about, oh, it's just slightly higher than a 64th on the bass side which is roughly 0.4 to 0.5 millimeters. So that's, that's a tiny amount. You know, of course, when you're pressing the string down to the second or third fret, it's gonna be significantly lower, probably half of what it would be if you measured it without pressing the string down to the second or third fret. So, um, but in the end, it seems like everybody's in the same neighborhood about what they like for action. And I know that almost everybody seems to prefer low action because it's, it's easier to play, it's more comfortable. Now, another interesting topic that was mentioned in the comments was how some of you will target specific uh, string action numbers based on the radius of the fretboard, which is actually really important. And at least one comment mentioned that for a more rounded 
fender style fretboard, such as a, like a seven and a half to I think nine inches, they target a specific number. And then for a flatter radius, like with a Gibson, which would be, you know, your 12 inch or even flatter, they have a different set of numbers that they try to shoot for. And I think a lot of that has to do with not just the radius, although that, that does definitely play a big part in it, but also the style of music and the playing style that um, will dictate how the action needs to be set. You know, for example, are you, you know, a string bender? Are you, you know, playing really hard riffs, uh, finger tapping, that sort of thing? That can all play a role in determining the type of string action that you're going to shoot for. But um, I also noticed that probably most of the comments were from folks who are setting up guitars that they play themselves. But there were a few sprinkled in there that were from guys who are building guitars for other customers. And that's pretty much where, where my focus is, is I want to know, you know, what's the best action uh, specifically for people who ask for low action and what's the best action to build a guitar that I don't know who the end buyer is going to be. So I think that for me at least, uh, what, what makes the most sense is to stick with the five to or four to five sixty fourths of an inch on the bass side at the 12th fret and then around three sixty fourths of an inch on, at the 12th fret for the treble strings. And then at the first fret, I'm going to continue with about 20 thousandths on the bass side and somewhere between uh, 10 and 15 thousandths on the treble side. Or, you know, I'll press the string down to the second or third fret and check to see how much daylight is just peeking underneath the string uh, between the top of the fret. So um, that's kind of what the topic was for this week. And, you know, I'm not really sure where I was going with it, but I thought it was really interesting to see what everybody favors out there. And it kind of confirmed in my mind that everybody's sort of in the same ballpark when it comes to setting the action for their guitars. But anyway, I hope you found this video to be useful, informative, inspiring. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, click the, the uh, subscribe button. If you don't already subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. And if you want to show some love and support to this channel and uh, get something in return, head over to eGuitarPlans.com, purchase a plan for a guitar or some of the different types of tools that I make and use for building guitars. And even if you don't use the plans, just know that your, uh, the, the money you spent is helping this channel to continue on. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.